Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing another product review. We'll be looking at this lovely brown box here. Um, actually, this is the GT08 smartwatch that just came in from China. I bought it for around $18, and we're going to be unboxing it and taking a look at the features and the build quality here. Just doing a general first impressions video on the device, and let's see if it's crap or not. Go ahead and crack the box open here. It's very plain, no markings at all on it. And first thing inside the box is the watch. Put that off to the side and see what else we got in here. Cardboard spacer, which is pretty nasty. Um, this <laughs> smartwatch phone user guide. Please read the manual before use. Well, I'm not sure if that's entirely possible. Let's see. Get the focus. Safety warning. The information in this document won't be modified or extended in accordance with any notice. The watch should be charging two hours at least before use. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, this um, not the worst translation I've ever seen in my life, but uh, yeah, still not great. <clears throat> Go ahead and get rid of that. And the only other thing we've got in here is a micro USB cable. Fairly short, but seems reasonable quality enough. I haven't actually used that yet. And I have had the watch out and I've played around with it a little bit already. Um, it's in one of these kind of thin film plastic protector bags. Pull it on out of there, and the first thing you'll notice with this watch is it's much, much higher quality than most of the other kind of cheapy smart watches that you can buy on eBay. It's actually aluminum band around the outside, and this strap is a very solid, kind of hard rubber, um, similar to what you see on a lot of kind of sports watches and stuff. It's not super high quality feeling, but it's not bad either. The uh, clasp mechanism is quite nice here. It's got just these two little pins that push into the holes here and just snap together quite satisfyingly and seems to hold very sturdy. So that's that's a bonus there. Um, as you probably noticed already, this watch is designed to look quite a lot like the Apple Watch. However, it's not an exact clone. It's just kind of a mimic. Uh, the little jog wheel dial here, which is actually just a button on this, is it's placed um, right in the middle where it's up off to the uh, corner on the actual Apple Watch. This isn't, I don't believe that's even on the Apple Watch. It's got a speaker grill down here, which, uh, so it does have an internal speaker. And the back actually comes off of this. <clears throat> I'll show you how that works. And uh, strangely enough, this watch is not only a smartwatch, but it's actually a phone. So you can make calls on the device as well. Which is quite strange why you would actually want to do that, but uh, yeah, you can put a SIM card in it, a micro SD card, pull the battery out here, which I believe it was on when I did that, so that's probably not the greatest thing for it. But let's see, yeah, we've got our 4 gig micro SD card that I put in there, and we have our SIM card tray, which just pops open like that. Um, so yeah, you can stick a SIM card in there and use it to make calls, and um, well, as far as I can tell, the speaker sounds pretty good, and I was able to make a Bluetooth call through it, so I would imagine the call quality would be probably okay, as long as it doesn't drop the calls. Let's see if I can fit this back in here. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It actually has a removable battery. Um, woo! Slightly springy strap there. Uh, wanting to run away from me. Let's see if I can't get that back in where it's supposed to be. Oh, this is hard to do on camera. I can't see what I'm doing. No! Get in there. All right, there we go. Got that back on. The back back on. Hopefully the right way around. Now we'll see if we killed it by pulling the battery out while it's running. Press and hold the power button, and it shows the little Android logo and says smartwatch. Plays a crappy little animation, and you're in. Um, yeah, so this is primarily to be used with Android. It's going to try to connect to my Moto G3, but I don't have it down here. Boy, I should have thought that through before I started the video. Anyway, we're not going to be looking at the um, connection part of it. I'm going to make a whole separate video about how to get this thing set up on your phone because it's not super simple. Um, that's an entire video's worth of content right there. So, But we're just going to go ahead and look at some of the basic features from the home screen here. 
Um, it's showing our time, which since it's not connected to my phone and I just reset the device, it just shows a bunch of zeros. Um, yeah, so it says it's basically midnight is what it's thinking. Um, and we've got this home screen that looks kind of similar to the uh, Apple Watch um, app menu. It's got a bunch of little things on here. It's actually a fairly responsive screen, and I believe it's glass. It feels like glass. It doesn't feel like plastic, and it hasn't scratched yet, and I've been wearing it around a little bit already. So I think it's glass. It's probably not very high quality. It's definitely not Gorilla Glass or anything nice like that, but it feels like it's all right. Um, this actually has a camera in it, which is quite surprising. Uh, yeah, you can see. Um, not exactly a good quality camera. You can see the camera in front of it here, but it, you could take a picture with it. <laughs> I don't know why you would really want to take a picture with it, but it, it works. I, mean, I guess that's nice to have. I don't know. I, if I was designing this, I would have just left it out. But yeah, that's a thing. Um, you can look at pictures. I believe that's WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Chrome. However, none of that will work unless you have a SIM card in it, because those are, well, it runs off the 3G or 2G or whatever this thing's capable of. I don't know its actual phone specs. Um, it has an internal music player. It has a microphone so you can record, um, like, voice memo stuff. Go ahead and go in there. So, yeah, you can record, playback stuff and select files from here. <clears throat> and if you go into the music player, go ahead and select a new track. I'll only play a second of this because it is copyrighted. Put it up to here. Yeah, so that's actually not terrible sounding. Um, really surprising for how small the device actually is. Um, and what I thought would be kind of cool is if you could take this band off without destroying it, it'd be like the world's tiniest phone ever. I mean, it's just the, this is the absolutely tiny little thing, and it is a full phone, and it, you could argue that it's actually a smartphone because it does have a web browser, and it has quite a lot of features uh, that a basic phone doesn't have, and it has camera and things. It's not good, but Hey, it, it does have a lot of features. Um, it's got a pedometer. Or actually, ooh, I don't know. I think that's a pedometer. I don't know. It looks like it should be. Let's go back into that. Yeah, it's a step. How long you've been running and how many steps you've taken. So that's that's a pedometer. Haven't actually tested that yet, so I don't know if it works or not. Um, we have alarms, uh, sleeping tracker thing, kind of useless. We have a file browser. I keep bumping the camera. Come on. Wow, that icon's really hard to hit. There we go. And you can go in here and select stuff from the memory card. I don't have much of anything on there. We can use a Bluetooth capture option, which allows us to act as like a remote shutter button for your phone, which is kind of handy. Um, go across here, we have calendar. Uh, phone finder, so if it's out of range, it'll notify you. Um, we have our QR code down here. The screen doesn't exactly show up the best on the camera. This allows you to go to the app uh, that's designed for this. However, I had some trouble with that app and ended up using a different one. We'll go into that on the next video. Uh, yeah, that's going to be quite a lengthy process explaining what I did to get this thing working somewhat decently. Because apparently, reading a lot of other reviews on here, a lot of other people haven't actually even managed it yet, get this thing functioning with their phone. Um, but I figured out how to get most of the features to work. There's a few things that you have to kind of disable, or that I prefer to be disabled, but it doesn't really affect it overall. You can still get notifications on it, which is all that really matters for me. Um, but yeah, that's just a little overview here. You can get a general idea of what the watch looks like. It's quite heavy. I'll put it on my wrist here so you can see what it looks like. Um, I'm not going to try to clip it together, but yeah. So it's quite a chunky watch. It's pretty decent quality. It feels like a much more expensive device than what it is. Um, the band's fairly easy to get on and off. It doesn't feel like it's going to go around and break anytime soon, so that's quite good. Overall, I'm very pleased with the build quality of it. 
and I'm pretty pleased with the aesthetics. The software is a little buggy, just like it was with the U8 smartwatch that I looked at before. This has a lot of the same issues, and it seems like most of these Chinese smartwatches have those problems. Um, but there's a lot of workarounds that you can do to get them to be acceptable. And this one has basically solved many of the complaints that I had about the U8 watch, which was down to just really the build quality of it and the poorer quality screen and just kind of overall aesthetic of it. It looked like a piece of junk. <laughs> really, it did. It didn't look good. And half the reason of getting a smartwatch is, well, it looks cool, you know. And that's a big reason for getting one of these is, well, it kind of looks like an Apple Watch and it looks like a much more expensive device than it is. And it feels like a more expensive device than it is. For $18, this is a pretty nice little thing. It's really quite a nicely made little device. And um, so far, if you're willing to put in the time to fiddle around with it and experiment around with it and figure out what works, it's a pretty good device. But if you're not tech savvy with Android, and if you're not willing to play around with this stuff for a while and screw around with it for a couple of days getting it working, then this probably isn't the device for you. But we'll go on to that more in the next video. And in, on that note, I am going to let you guys go. And if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for the next video on this device, which will be dealing with the software. And I will see you guys then. Have a good one.